why not? Let's have a look at this as well. Absolutely caking it in there, flipping egg. Doing a verge style here. Year 1998 to 9999. Interesting. So this over here is another mini PC. And when we're talking about mini PCs, this is probably one of the smallest ones I have ever seen. So without no further ado, let's have a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Who Keys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So this is by company Aerofara and it's very widely available, you know, on Amazon. So feel free to check it out in the links in the description below if you want to pick one of those up. But it says here Ryzen 5000 series CPU, mini PC, brilliant for change. Is that a slogan? Good slogan? I don't know what it means. And then on the back, there's a few different options you can get our one here as you can see is the Ryzen 5 5600U processor and I think this is 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes SSD which we're gonna check out it's funny by accessories they mean just the power plug and we've got an HDMI cable and then here's the PC okay so this is probably like if you want to mount it on the back of a monitor like a visa mount or something like that you've got these screws here Okay, here it is. Power button, headphone jack, a USB type C, type A ports, type three. I guess they're all five gigabit ports, maybe 10 gigabit ports. DC in, HDMI ports, uh, two more USB ports, and then a LAN port. Aha, look at this. Little secret screws underneath. Uh -huh. It does come off from the front, like the front uh, power button panel comes off like that there we can see the inside uh-huh and then comes out the back way underneath here we can see a little fan here so it is active cooling not passive cooling 15 watts on the top here we have two ram sticks actually so this is 16 gigabytes of ddr4 and look there's a sata port here as well so you can put 2.5 inch ssd on the top here as well if you want like a secondary ssd which is absolutely fantastic okay here's like a little frame for the 2.5 inch ssd that just slides on the top there so what we can see is the bios uh, battery two ram sticks let's have a look if there's any information around there use upgradable nvme ssd and actual ram sticks i'm loving that uh, although because this is ryzen 5600u you are limited to pci gen 3 um, ssds here this one is kingston nv1 i've used them before the fantastic drive i have exactly the same drive actually uh, i can see these are wi-fi antennas that have been uh, taped on the side of this pc okay so here's the cooling there might be two heat pipes yeah you can see two heat pipes one two like the ends and bend around here and then this goes down so i don't think this got very good contact with the actual cpu uh, frame so this screw wasn't like in properly at all i just want to see the thermal paste application to see how good that is let's take the cpu fan off okay so that was just the fan actually here not the cpu the cpu like contact frame hit there underneath is through these uh, four screws why not let's have a look at this as well let's see how well they have pasted the cpu just to see if you can do a better job or not might as well okay it's quite good actually and as you can see they have apply the thermal paste all over this IHS so even the side of the frame of the CPU here was covered as well you can see that even these uh, capacitors or little voltage regulator or SMDs on the side of the actual CPU you know die there they have actually been inside the thermal paste as well so basically what i'm saying is if you are gonna get this you don't really need to redo the application of this uh, cpu thermal paste so nothing bad to say let's do the same as what they did they had some paste on the side there okay i'm gonna put some paste in the middle there it is a bit overpacing, but to be honest, you can't really overdo it here. 
absolutely caking it in there, flipping egg. Doing a verge style here. A little bit extra and layer it on top of the CPU. And they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's gonna be good. I'm just gonna spread it a little bit. Once it's all covered, I'm gonna put another little squish so that if it is a little bit higher, it will spread it all across. I'll be very careful when putting this heatsink back. Let's put the fan back. So actually, in essence, you have no reason to actually even go on the other side of this uh, frame, like on this CPU side, because there's no upgrade paths. So I wouldn't actually do that. Make sure you tape these back in there. That goes from the right side. But interestingly, there is no like warranty stickers on any of the screws. So basically they're saying, look, open it up if you want to. We're still gonna keep your warranty and we're not gonna avoid it, which is which is good news, really. Wi-Fi is upgradable here, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is very, very nice. I like that. I think it comes with Wi-Fi 6, but you know, potentially you could upgrade it to Wi-Fi 6E. It's very, very well cut out. Like the plastic goes perfectly around this. So it really well like holds tight. And then the back goes in the same, just very, very like snug. In terms of the power brick, it is a 19 volt and three amperes. So roughly about a 60 watt, you know, charger. I'm gonna put my keyboard and mouse in. Press the power button, see what happens. Okay, it's on. You can see a little LED on there. Nothing else. I can hear something. Okay, you can see Aerofarer. So the memory speed is 2667 mega transfers a second. Year 1998 to 9999. Interesting. CPU configuration. Look at that. If they want to, they can have a collaboration. Internet, Ethernet controller, and AMD processor. There we go. I don't think there is any uh, overclocking that you can do or power output that we can uh, push through. Okay, it can't find the NVMe device. Okay, it is definitely plugged in. Fascinating. Five hours later. Okay, this is an MSI, I think it's Spatium M480 or something like that. Interesting, Windows boots on that one. So it does read that. So there's something wrong with the NVMe that it came with and I have no idea what, so probably a faulty NVMe. Let me see if we can contact someone to fix this. Alrighty, it's been quite a long time. Basically, I finally got this uh, Aerofer PC, Tank 56 PC working. Basically, what was wrong with this was it got shipped with a dead uh, NVMe drive inside, which is quite weird. This is the Kingston MV1 500 gigabyte version, and I actually had exactly the same drive here. It's slightly different actually for some reason, which is another interesting thing. So maybe there's two different versions of this, but I put my NV. Um, one there, exactly the same size, installed the windows and drivers and everything, and now boom, we've got it working. So I tried to get this sorted with the contact I had from Aerofera, and they weren't very helpful. They basically said, I don't know, I said tech support, and tech support answered, it's SSD problem, which I told them it was. I'm not so sure they really came across very good as the, um, you know, customer service support. I asked, like, can you send me, you know, a replacement and NVMe drive? They said, oh, we don't do that. Anyway, I sorted the problem myself. If you go to the Aerofara website, you can actually uh, download the drivers yourself. As you can see here, the Tank 56, which I have here. You can just go OS and drivers and then actually download or install the windows and any of the things. So if, if it actually does break the good thing is you can fix it yourself first of all the cpu is the ryzen 5 5600u which is a six core and 12 thread processor which is quite nice but it's a mobile uh, version there they have installed already uh, 16 gigabytes two times eight sticks in there which is very nice although slightly slow i would say 2667 megahertz this is quite cheap ram and i think they just bought them in bulk whatever was left over but i think like 3200 megahertz really is the standard because we can see that the 5600 uh, u here specifications 
uh, it does support DDR4 up to 3200 MHz. So that's without XMP, obviously. Um, with LP DDR4, it supports a little bit more if you go anyway. But regardless, I think the memory should be a little bit faster what they shipped it with. The GPU is the integrated GPU that's in the, the CPU, which is, what is it? Uh, Radeon graphics with uh, seven graphics cores. It's, you know, all right, I guess. Let's test that though. So. OpenCL, AMD Radeon Graphics, let's have a look. So 13,660, slightly better than the Intel UHD 770 that's on the 12th gen uh, GPUs in terms of actual graphics calculating power here on the OpenCL, but it's not as good as the M1, for example. The M1 is 18,000 or something like that, slightly over 18,000, so nothing like amazing. I don't think you're gonna do loads of graphics you know power with this this is meant for something else but and let's have a look what we're gonna do over here so it's pulling 30 watts here from the socket and we are 64 c let's have a look how's it gonna do okay look at that now we've hit 70 c the actual wattage has pulled down to 25 watts so it's lost like it's boost whatever okay as you can see the core clock speeds um were boosting to about 4.2 which is interesting right it doesn't go dead hot and to be honest it is quite silent actually like compared to some of the other mini PCs, if you remember the Morphine mini PC, that was much, much, much louder. This is just a little shh like that in the background. So I'm quite happy with that. So 7,522. We're over 70 at the moment, but it's still pushing 30, 30 watts through. And look at that. It's 3.1 gigahertz at the moment. 3.2 maybe. Is there a time limit when it's going to actually undo this? see we've dropped dropped like 100 megahertz now 2.8 and instantly as you can see 5 watts has gone so it looks like it works almost similarly to the intel turbo boost in terms of the clocks look we've dropped loads of clock now 2.63 and 20 watts 19 watts look at that 2.5 gigahertz so yikes that is that is no good look 17 watts is this just because it can't hold the temperature it's definitely gone way 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 slower 15 watts now so it boosted like up to 30 watts but now it's 15 watts i wonder how does the tdp work on this one or how have they configured it yeah look second time now we got quite a bit lower score i'm looking at some scores here and i can see m1 is scoring about 7700 and uh, 7800 which is actually very close to what we have over here. So this Ryzen 5 2600X desktop processor is basically what we have over here. So we're putting like desktop processor type of performance on the table, but only with like 30 watt boost and 15 watts like kind of, you know, all core uh, TDP, the ceiling, which is very, very interesting. So as you can see here, this is 5600U. Let's have a look what's around. So desktop 10400, roughly around there. What we have 10500T, which is another six core processor. i7 7800X, six core processor. Can you see that? 7500. So this is pretty much better than that, which is absolutely ridiculous. So in terms of multi-core score for this, it's quite impressive actually. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put a CPU burner on. Let's have a look how does the hardware react to this now, okay? So we're burning the CPU, let's have a look. Package power 30 watts. Let's have a look how long are we pulling this through. About 45 seconds and then it pulls down to 5 watts. As you can see we're on 25 watts now. And then 3 gigahertz before it was 3.2. It's still not that hot though. It's the only still 76C which is not like super hot which I don't know. It's, it's not like thermal throttling. Why is it not pushing more power through? About another minute afterwards, it pulls the TDP down to 20 watts. Oh, it keeps going down now. It's gonna go down to 15 watts, isn't it? Yeah, slowly going down to 15 watts. So what we're seeing roughly 45 seconds of 30 watts power, then extra minute of about 25 watts, and then it pulls it down to roughly about 15 watts. So at the moment we're just above 15 and then now it's like 68c and 2.5 gigahertz 
2.4 gigahertz really on all core. So it's interesting because it's not actually going very hot. It's not letting it go very hot, which is a little bit interesting. It takes a little bit of time to cool down because its intake is on the right side. And then from the left side, I can feel it exhausting. So it pulls cold air from there and pushes it out from there, which could lift the thermal limit a little bit longer, but it probably doesn't want to do that stress test. So this is 720p, about 24 watts. 28 watts, 31 watts. Okay, interesting. We're pushing about the same wattage through the GPU as we did for the CPU, which is very fascinating. GPU clock is 1800 megahertz, which it did uh, advertise as well. GPU temperature 60C right now. So look, a little bit later and then our GPU is the same, about 13 watts now. And GPU clock speed is not um, 1800 anymore. It's about 1400 now. That's only 30 sec seconds later, or what is it now? 45 seconds, and then we're 12 watts. 23 frames per second in 720p here. Okay, we've dropped even lower to 1200 megahertz clock speed for the GPU. And we're pushing through like about 12 watts, 9 watts, somewhere around there. As you can see, the GPU temperature goes up when it's pulling more power. And now because it's pulling less power, it's actually dropped a little bit and then kind of plateaus somewhere around the 55, 60 C. So it's quite interesting actually that this PC is so small, it's very quiet, but still has quite a bit of power. Six cores, 12 threads in a small form factor like this. I know these days we're gonna say, ah, oh, that's not a lot of power. But if you think about it, it's like as good as some of the desktop CPUs and GPUs um, of like a few years ago. Obviously we're not gonna get into the discrete GPU level graphics power from there, but in terms of just CPU power, it's very, very impressive in just a small pack like that. If you want to maybe drive some just monitors, or have this like behind the monitor or a TV, have something just plugged in, surf the web or play some 4K footage or something like that. This could be very, very interesting PC for that. Anyway, I've got mixed feelings. I think it still packs quite a lot of power. What I like about this is that it's small. It can do a little bit of creative applications there, especially if you're a photographer, for example. This could be quite interesting, depending how much RAM you're gonna put in there. The downsides are just, I guess, the customer service from the company. Other than that, everything is like very solid, like all the metal and all the build quality feels feels quite good, you know? It's not like an Apple quality, but compared to what you pay for this, I think it's quite all right. And the power you pack in there with the 5600U's Ryzen processor, Ryzen 5, six cores, 12 threads, you can't really complain having that much power in just the palm of your hand. Really, you can take it anywhere. The only thing you have to worry about is the power brick and even that isn't that big. So then, if you're interested in this, check it out in the description below. Likes and subs and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.